tonight is going to be a practical class. But then uh, you, it is very important for you to understand all of these things I'm about to show you now. Okay, so this is Borderless Skills website. This is the front end of the website. This is the part that you can see. And I can also see it. Anyone can see this. But the part where I actually developed this is the back end. And that is where you as a developer will start working on for your client or the public to see. So now I'm going to the back end of this particular website. On the website, uh, on the URL, I'm adding slash WP dash admin. Don't worry about that for now. Uh, I just want to show you certain things. I'm going to WP admin. That is, I'm going to administrative uh, dashboard. Okay. So I have my username and password there already. But I'm just logging in now. All right, so welcome to the dashboard of WordPress that controls um, the back end, that controls the front end, and also controls uh, the back end. All of the all of the files. For example, now uh, let me show you all of this. Let me show you something from here. This front end, we have this image. Hold on, please. It's loading. We have this image. We have all of these texts. We have all of these images. All of these things reside on the server at the back end. But then we were able to place it on this front end through this dashboard. I don't know if you are trying to um, understand that now. So tonight we want to deal with back end. Remember we talked about, we've talked several times about back end, front end. And somebody has already defended between back end and front end for us. So the back end comprise of basically the server side and the administrative dashboard, which you are seeing right now. And this is where the whole development uh, of the website happens. So whatever you do on this dashboard is stored on the server. And it is what the server now displays whenever anybody calls for that information through the website's URL. That is what the server will now, you know, display to the person. So, in essence, the dashboard is where you do all your development. Everything you are doing, everything you are developing happens inside the dashboard. And then all of this information, maybe you are, you, you're displaying a video on your website, you are displaying an image, you are displaying text, you are displaying all kinds of things. You are adding functionality, you are sending products, an e-commerce website where you are sending products, you are loading all your products, adding prices, all of those things you are doing them inside the dashboard. But those files you are uploading, all of them resides inside the server. So tonight we want to deal with both the server side and the dashboard. Um, this is the dashboard. And then right now I would like to walk us through the uh, terminologies, uh, through all of the options. Um, this is this is, um, this is the dashboard that you will see once you have your WordPress set up on the host. On, that is on the hosting platform. So we are still going to deal with that also tonight. And then uh, this is where you want to log in to create every of your content, create your, customize your website, do whatever you, you want to do. So we are going to walk you through the WordPress dashboard so that you understand all of the parts. And then I would like to start from uh, the team. If you go down at this left corner, you will see, come to appearance, you will see team. I'm picking them based on their importance, according to their importance. We have the team, pages, posts, plugins, and so many, so many other features of the uh, dashboard. But I'm starting with the team. Uh, I don't know if you have an idea of what a team means. It's essentially uh, a template, like a template of a website that you are trying to load so that you can just customize those templates to, to mimic, you know, what the template looks like and then have it to function, you know, uh, perform certain function for you or display certain information that you want people to see using the, the same structure of that team. 
So it's like a, a ready-made, uh, an already developed website that you just get from online. Some are free, some are paid. So you just download them from online and you customize them. But if you don't want to go through that route, you can also customize yourself. Create your page, create your post, create your own content, create your own uh, uh, sections and whatever you want to do. Take for example now, this website you are seeing, it's, it's, it's a custom built one, no team. So it means I sat down to create all of these things from scratch. And then that is where I also want to uh, take us to tonight. In uh, I'm working us through a step whereby we can customize all kinds of websites from the beginning. Areas where we use team are when you have lots of projects on your hand and then um, you need to deliver them quickly and then uh, you don't really have time to start customizing from the beginning. Then that way you can easily, you know, go online, get a team and be able to customize. And then it depends on the kind of clients and the amount you are charging. Some clients uh, would personally request for a team because they can easily go online and research a team that fits into their business. There are all kinds of teams online that you can easily search that fits into your business or what you want. Then that person can just purchase that team, I mean that client, and you know, sense you that, okay, please customize with my business based on this team. And also you yourself, you can also go online and get teams and customize them and deliver them for your clients. Your clients could not wait to see team. So, but in a case whereby you are being given a sketch work, a template, like a Figma design, and they want you to design from scratch, that is why it is very important for you to also know how to uh, build a website on your own. Then another thing we would like to talk about is uh, the plugin. The plugin. I'm still walking you through. In fact, this is not a major thing we want to do tonight. But for you to understand where we are going, it is very important for you to understand uh, the dashboard, which is where the development happens. So I want you to see this dashboard as a Facebook page. Just the way you go over to Facebook page, you want to upload picture. You want to type, you want to write uh, your caption. And you want to post it on your Facebook for people to go live, to go to the public. Your dashboard is just like that section where you are editing, writing your content, and also adding images or adding videos or whatever you are adding to the post that you are posting to go live on Facebook. Remember that at that stage where you are still typing, and at that stage where, at that portion, that section where you are also uploading your pictures and video, until you click on post, nobody will see what you are doing at the back end. That is just the way this thing works. So it's as simple as you navigating through your Facebook. Remember there was a time you also didn't know how to navigate through Facebook, but gradually you began to, you know, get some basic, understand some basic features of Facebook. Oh, you can do this. Oh, this is where I can share notification. Oh, this is where I can change my privacy. Oh, this is where, this is how I can accept new friends. This is just a dashboard that works exactly like that. So gradually you will begin to understand uh, the different functionalities of this dashboard, what all of these things does. Now you can see media, which means that where you can upload a media library. So if I click on this media and let me just show you, you will see all of the images that you can see on the front end of this website. They are here at the back end. Can you see? So they are here at the back end. So this image now, okay, okay, I think now, you can see all of these images. And if you go to the front end, you can also see them here too. You can see this image that we have on the hero set. This is what we call the hero set. We will still get to all of those things. You can also see that, see that image here. So all of the images you are uploading on your website at the back end, you are now telling you are now dragging them to stay at a particular position at the front end. That is what that dashboard does for you. So we are still going to get all of those things. I just wanted to understand um, the basics and the uh, lingos of uh, WordPress dashboard. Now you can see pages. Pages means 
I can, I want to go to affiliate. If you click on affiliate, that is a new page. This is a page entirely. This is a page entirely. Okay, if you go back to the home page, that is a page entirely. Those are pages. Now, if this is a website that has a blog, you will also those blogs uh we call them posts because uh they you are posting content to arrange in chronological order. If you post today, it will stack. Post another one today, it will the, the post will stack again stack on the on the one you posted yesterday and it will be arranging in a chronological order and that way you can easily um you can easily have all your posts all your contents together on the same page that is what uh, all this news if you go to punch go to uh um, um was it arise tv uh blogs all, all these bloggers that is what they use they do post so I think I need to show you a website. Okay, let me just use my test users website for you to understand what a post is. Okay. So, okay, resources. Now I'm going to blog. So if you go to blog now, you can see you can see this this post is from february 26 2022 3 30 p.m this post is from february 22 2022 uh, year 2022 so that way you will be able to see all of it also you have it means on the same page you have all kinds of information stacking upon each other so those are what we call uh blog posts and then uh, you must have heard about blogs 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 that's if you're you are the kind of person who are on this um meeting just because you want to know how to develop blog you want to start developing your own blog so bear it in mind that what you'll be dealing with mostly are posts now pages i've talked about pages uh all kinds of pages this is a page that is holding together different posts if you go to the home page, it's a is a page. The about us is another page. Services is another page. Resources are another page. Under resources, you have all kinds of pages. Now, this bar, this section that you are looking at, the first section, is what we call the menu bar. The menu bar holds the logo. Then it also contains uh, the nav bar. The nav bar is where you have links to all those pages that you, you've created on your website. For example, the home page, the about us page, the services page, contact us page. You want to give people a link and you want to arrange it in such a way that they can easily navigate. So nav bar means navigation bar. That is, sorry, I'm trying to accept you for in. That is, a a bar that contains all of the links to all your pages so that people can easily you can easily group them people can easily navigate themselves through uh whatever they want to do on your website so that is the first section uh of a website then uh let me go to the home page let me, let me let's work with this so this this is the lab bar and this is where you have a logo and this is a call to action button a cta button which is where you place uh, the important action you want people to take. If you want them to sign up, if you want them to contact you, this is where you, you know, put that. Then this first section that you are looking at is where is what we call uh, the hero section. The hero section contains uh, the first heading, the main heading of the, of the website, the call to action button, and um, uh, an image or a video just to, we, we generally can call them an asset just like we discussed in the last class just to be able to you know represent give people a broader understanding of uh what that website is all about so once people anyone gets to your website the first thing they meet is the hero section so this is just to explain to you what uh pages means then let's go back to our dashboard 
So on the dashboard, you have all kinds of um, uh, functions, all kinds of um, buttons that you can work with, uh, with different functionalities. The most important one, again, after the team and the pages is uh, the plugin. So a plugin is just uh, a quick and easy way to, you know, add functionality to your website. It's, um, it's, it helps you, you know, to add uh, extra functionalities. For example, you want to add an e-commerce website, uh, an e-commerce uh, functionality. You want people to be able to make payments on your website. So you easily go and get a um, Pixstack plugin or you get a paper plugin. So a, a, a plugin can easily call it, um, we, we can just call it an add-on, just something you add to the website to give you extra functionality, just to give you, uh, to give you what you want to do, ability to be able to you know, uh, perform the tasks you want the website to do. For example, if you want to display a calendar on your website, so you easily come to the website and you do what? You, you, you add uh, the Canada plugin and you, that way you'll be able to display Canada on your website. If you want to add Facebook, um, what's it called? Facebook widgets. You want feeds from your Facebook or your Instagram or from your Twitter to appear on your Facebook, then you, on your uh, website, then you easily go to the plugin uh, portion. There are thousands, thousands of um, plugins. Some are free then some are paid. In fact, the ones that are paid, they still give you the free version. But if you want uh, sophisticated uh, functionalities, then, or if you want functionalities that they know that, okay, you are using this function functionality to generate income for yourself, then they also want you to, you know, pay certain amounts. And most of these plugins, they are one-time, most of them are just one-time payment. Some are as cheap as $2, $3. But I can tell you, if you if you are building a website, you, you don't need if I you don't you don't I don't think you really need any paid plugin for now. You don't even need any paid plugin except your client request certain functionality, and that way you either tell them to purchase it or you had the cost of uh, purchasing it to their bill. So let let me just go to plugins. Let's even check the plugins that are working inside this borderless skills website. So the same website where you registered, let's check check out what um, plugins are working inside. So now we have different plugins. This is ACF, this, the name of this plugin is ACF Photo Gallery. That is a plugin that helps me to display pictures on my website in form of a gallery. Then we have advanced custom field, accessment and spam means security. Uh, you have all in one SEO, means uh, it helps you to, it helps your website to rank well on Google. Search, uh, SEO is search engine optimization. So we have all kinds of um, plugins here. Now we have uh, contact form seven, which is used for just like the name, contact. So it helps you to place a form. Are you getting that? So you can see the description here, just another contact form plugin, simple but flexible. So it helps you to add uh, a, a form Take for example now you can see you fill the form on this website. Okay, let's go to let's go to the main. I'm taking you to the website where you actually register from because that is how I want you to understand what we are actually seeing here. Okay, so remember you you fill this form. It is after you fill this form that you send, you submit that you are then redirected to the page where you were able to make payments for this. Um, a certification for this course. This form was created with this plugin, Contact Form 7. Now, look at the page. You will also see uh, a WhatsApp us button. Click to share. That is, if you click on this button, it will take you to where? It will take you to a WhatsApp, uh, to your WhatsApp where you can easily message me, even with a custom message inside it. So this was done with click to chat. In essence, what we are saying is that whatever you want to do on your website, you only need a plugin, which is an add-on, an add-on software that enables you to add functionalities to your extra functionalities to your website. So whatever it is that thing that you want to do, just think about it. What do I want to do? Oh, my website, 
I want to add products. Then what do you need? Just go on Google and just say uh, plugins to add to add products to my website on WordPress. That is, you want to add products to your website on WordPress, but you don't know the name of that plugin. Just enter. Can you see? You have all kinds of options, plugins to add uh, products. Can you see? Product add-ons for WooCommerce, e-commerce product catalog. So you have all kinds of plugins. In fact, if you go to, if you add free, if you add free, free plugins, can you see? You have WooCommerce, which I can tell you is the best. Forget about the paid ones. If you want to add products to your to your, uh, to your uh, 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 WordPress website, the only thing you need is a, is a WooCommerce plugin. It is completely free. The only way, the only place uh, where they can ask you to, you know, pay a dollar or two dollars is when you want to start getting payments uh, from international countries, and that way you want certain uh, uh, features, extra features beyond the normal ones that they provide. That is when they ask you to, you know, pay. But whatever you want to do with e-commerce, WooCommerce provides you that um, opportunity. So these are types of plugins. So I really want you all, please, if you have your pen there, write it down now. Your first assignment for tonight is, I want you to all to read about themes. And then I want you all to read about plugins. And write, I will appreciate you to submit this on the group chat. Write out the best, the essential, 10 essential plugins that you cannot do without. If you are developing a website, there are essential plugins you cannot do without. So I want you to, to write out 10 of those essential plugins that you cannot do without. The reason for asking you to do take this as an assignment is because if I just ask you now to go over and read about uh, plugins, many of you would not read about plugins. And it, there's no way you can do without plugins on websites. There's no way. If there's virtually not, you cannot do anything. So I really want you all to understand what plugins means. Tonight, we are going to be dealing majorly with server side. That is the main backend that controls this dashboard. Whatever we are doing on this dashboard now goes to the server. The server interacts together with the dashboard to display the front end, you know, to display all of this to people. But all of these things now, you have done them inside the dashboard. And they are being stored in the server. So what, whenever anybody you know requests using www.whatever.com and requests for your website details, is going to extract through the dashboard. Is going to extract all of this information from the server and do what display it for that person. So it's as simple as that. Then uh, you will see all of those all of these uh, functionalities. They are plugins. You can see WooCommerce. Many have been able to you know add products on my website you can even know orders how many people ordered how many customers do you have do you want to give coupons are you selling do you want to sell um if you're selling glasses or if you're selling shoe or if you're selling uh whatever you are selling wristwatch or whatever and you want to give if that product is um twenty thousand, you want to give coupon of a uh, coupon codes that is if you use uh so so code if you use uh, promo promo 200 promo 2023 and you want you just ask people that okay once you use this code you will have 10 percent slash this coupon option will just do that functional function for you all you need to tell it is use social code and attach social percentage to it so these are the beautiful things you can do with plugin now uh so just explore that there is a lot you can do with plugin i have showed let me show you a website for you to because i want to show you one essential plugin now if you are the type that you want to start placing courses uh 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 placing uh just like a course like this you want to pack them and just like udemy there are plugins for that so let's go to japademy.io one of the websites i developed recently Japademy is owned by um, an healthcare practitioner in UK. Okay, so you want to start a course. 
let's go to their course page. Let's go to their course page. So this, you would hardly believe that this is a WordPress website. Everything you are seeing there was developed with WordPress. So I want to go to their course pages Yeah. Now take, for example, you want to have this course, you want to do this course. Easily, you can do all of these things with the integration of a certain plugin. And what is the name of that plugin? An LMS plugin, learning management system plugin. So let's say we want to show all, we want to see all of their courses. Just for you to know that there's nothing you cannot do with a WordPress website. You can see, just like you are on Udemy. Uh, on, uh, uh, Udemy. So one last thing before we move to the server side, one last thing I will, because I'm watching our time, one last thing I would like to show you is how many, I'm going to Google now, okay, because of those who can hardly see my screen, google.com. Now I want to ask Google that, how many websites are powered by, by WordPress? Please, can anyone read this for us? Around uh, 16 million use WordPress as of 2023. According to our best estimations, this represents around 43% of all websites. And that figure is growing rapidly. In fact, over 500 sites are built with WordPress every day compared to just 60 to 80 on competitor platform like Shopify and Squarespace. Thank you so much. Um, now you can see 810 million websites built on WordPress as of now. There are other websites built on Shopify, Squarespace. All of these things are also no code. But the difference is that you are limited you are limited to their functions. You are limited to whatever they want to do. Uh, whatever you want to do, you are limited to the facility that they provide you. But with WordPress, it is unlimited. If you don't have the plugin, you can build the plugin and deploy it inside your website. If you know you want to do something and uh, if you have the coding skill, if you have the programming skill, why not? If you, if you are a PHP developer, build your plugin and integrate it. So WordPress gives you that flexibility to do whatever you want to do on your on your on your uh, on your website. In fact, I I, I researched certain uh, complex uh, tasks on the website, and I found out that there is virtually every uh, a plugin for every task you want to do on the website. Whatever it is you want to achieve, there's a plugin for it. In fact. Uh, I remember when, when I registered for Xpartner and I wondered what kind of platform did these guys use? Then, because I, 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 I got to understand how much these guys make on Xpartner and I, I just wonder what the owner of Xpartner would be making himself. Then I started exploring their website. I went to the back end. I, I inspected ah, what was the uh, you know, secrets behind all of these things until I found out that there is a plugin for affiliate commission, affiliates and affiliate management system. That day I said, wow, is there a free version of it? Yes, there's a free version of it. The first thing I did was, you know, go over my website and I integrated affiliate marketing platform. And I also have a dashboard where if you register as an affiliate, Take, for example, register as an affiliate, and then uh, you'll be given a custom link. And that custom link is only meant for, for you. Once you share it with uh, anyone and that person buys any of our products, you have your own commission automatically. And that is the same system Xpass Near use uh, and some other affiliate marketing system. In essence, what am I saying? There is nothing you want to achieve on your website that you cannot, you cannot find a plugin that does that thing, that will do that thing for you. So that is what I want you to understand about plugins. So LearningPress is what 
I used for this website that I just showed you, all of these courses, eh, I used NetPress. So just to show you that there's nothing you want to do. Can you see NetPress course review? A lot of things you want, you, you can, you know, you can achieve with that. There is Tutor LMS, Tutor Learning Management System. You see, Tutor is a complete solution for creating a learning management system in WordPress way. So there's a lot you can do with plugin. One uh, last thing I would like you to uh, take note of. Okay, we already talked about it. Is posts and pages. So right now I'm work. I'm going to walk you through the server side. How can you also, you know, get this kind of dashboard? Because I want you to start developing your own website. We want to develop something like this. Or let's find a simpler website. Okay, okay. Let's just find a page. Or is it possible for you to replicate this? I want you to start with developing something like this, a website like this, or a more simpler one. Okay, let's go to the affiliate section of this. Or something as simple as this. Can you develop it? So that is what we want to do. By the end of this uh, training, all of our students will be able to develop uh let's let me see let me see taking you back to our models yeah so all of our students will be able to de develop a blog an agent website or uh, a company website or an e-commerce website so whatever it is you want to do but you must be able to complete this before the end of this class uh, so to get started because i don't want to waste your time by this time of uh friday i want to start seeing projects we want to start you know attempting projects live to get the first thing you need is you need to have a dashboard like this where you can say okay the name of my uh website is maybe your name is ajewale joshua www.ajewalejoshua.com maybe the name of your business is team law www.timilo.com. I want you. I want to see that. I want to see that. Okay, you're already developing your own website. So to get started, to get uh, a dashboard, you need the server side. The server side is what controls both the dashboard and the front end. So we're going to that now. Please, before we get into that, uh, I hope you've all downloaded that file that particular um, Google Drive file. I want to be sure you've done that. Sir, sorry, could you please come again? I didn't get the parts. OK. I I uploaded, I uploaded a, a file, a software for you on the group. I don't know if you have downloaded it. And I wrote something that you should all download it. And that is what we are using for this class tonight. I also gave a Google link. I also gave a Google link. So I don't know. Have you done that? Yeah. Yeah. Not all of us have downloaded it, sir. Please, if you have downloaded it, please signify. I want to. I want to be. Sure. Sir, I downloaded the WordPress. I downloaded the WordPress. I downloaded the WordPress too. Okay. So how about the one inside the Google Drive? Uh inside the Google Drive. Okay, I tried typing the link on my um Chrome, but it's not going. It's just saying the um file is not does not exist there, rather. There is no way you can type the link and it will be correct. The best thing for you to do is copy it and then uh, see. It's very simple. Just connect your WhatsApp to your laptop. Are you getting me now? And then just click on that link and you'll be able to download it straight to your laptop. Go to your browser and type web.whatsapp.com. You will be able to connect your WhatsApp, synchronize your WhatsApp together with your laptop. And that way you can easily download that file inside the folder on your laptop. Another option is for you to download it on your phone. Then find a cable to connect your laptop with your, uh, with your phone and move the file from your phone to a folder on your laptop because if you want to start developing website then you want you you should also learn how to start synchronizing your phone together with your laptop now 
Don't forget your clients will be sending projects to you, sending all sorts of things to you on WhatsApp. So think of a way to connect your WhatsApp to your laptop. It's very easy to do. Just go to your browser and type what, uh, uh, just type, uh, what is it? Web.whatsapp.com. So then another thing I want to, well, if you have not done that, then that means I will have to continue. Then maybe later you can come back to this uh, video. Then another thing you can do is to, uh, what's it called? Another thing you can do is to start writing down the steps, yes. Write down the steps and then you can follow later. So are we good to go? Can we continue? Yes, sir. Okay, so then another thing I want to be sure of is that I'm using a MacBook, uh, I mean, Apple laptop, with different setup and procedures, different from uh, Microsoft uh, laptops. If you're using HP, using Dell, Toshiba, those are la Microsoft laptops. So I'm using an Apple laptop. So my setup may be different. It's, it's not even maybe, it is quite different from that of Windows. So if you are using Apple laptop, please name, how many of us are using Apple laptop here? And how many people are using uh, Windows laptop? I want to know uh, those who carry the uh, ISM proportion so that I can easily know which of it to switch to. I'm using Windows, sir. Windows. Yes, sir. Windows. Windows 2. Windows. Windows. OK, 3, 4, Windows. 5, 6. Windows. I use Windows 2. Nobody's oh, using door. <laughs> Everybody's using Windows. <laughs> you know, get money. Our no, money never <laughs> Okay. So, I think we should uh, switch to window. Oh, man. So, that way, um, I'm going to switch to window. I'm going to switch to window now. Uh, okay. I need to switch to Windows laptop, sorry. Please confirm you can all hear me from here. Can you hear me now? We can hear you, sir. We can hear you, sir. Okay, good, yeah. So I'm now on a Windows laptop. And that way we can be on the same page. But like I said, we need to understand certain things regarding uh, setting up your server. The first thing to do is to download. But now that you have not downloaded, I am I'm scared of how you are going to get out of these procedures. So the first thing to do is to download uh, a server side, like a control panel that mimics what you have on the internet, mimics a, a control panel that is based on a live server. So what we want to do now is we want to turn your laptop to a server. Just like you have Nameship uh, hosting account, we have Kodaji, we have all kinds of hosting accounts with their big servers in California and the UK, uh, some in Poland. So what you want to do too now is you want to turn your laptop at the corner of your room to a server that powers your website. So it means if your web, if your laptop is down, then your website is also down. If your server is down, then your laptop, your website is also down. So in essence, what, we, what you are doing is because you are still practicing, you are building your website offline. But, uh, but um, uh, you can also move it to an online space for you know, that is when it goes to the public for everyone to see. But for the sake of this uh, training period and for your personal development, personal uh, training sessions, it's good for you to practice with an offline uh, server. If you want to go live, you want to start developing websites using the online server, it costs a certain amount. You need to buy hosting. And then um, you don't have to buy that yourself. By the time you have your first client, your client buys that. Then uh, you also need to buy a domain name. So the first thing to do is to go on google.com 
and then download this some uh, we call it some uh, server that is it is going to it's a server that you can install on your laptop you can easily download it from anywhere but to make it easier for you i downloaded it for you so that you don't go and download the wrong ones i downloaded it for you and upload it again on um uh what's it called uh on google drive and give you the link but that is for 64 bit laptop so first check the specification of your laptop if your laptop is um it's 32 bits then you have to download for 32 bits so as you can see from here this sub server is a free and open source cross pattern web server solution so it allows you you know to turn your laptop to a server that powers your like, your website so you can download for the windows you can download for the mac you can download for Linux. uh then on the platforms you, you have we have uh, the 32 bit uh, version of it we have this is to the 64 bit version so the first thing to do is go to let me shake let me just let me teach you how to shake um how to share the properties of your laptop if you go to properties go to system okay 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 this is just go to about now you can see the details of your laptop this particular um hp is um mm -hmm. is 64 bit so for those who cannot see my screen the 64 bit operating system so that way you would know that what you are downloading is a 64 bit operating system uh uh some uh, software so i believe we understand that so i've downloaded that server downloaded it and then once you download it just the same way you install uh things just double click Also open the this info so that you can see the way it looks like. Okay, so you have you're gonna have the file here just like this. That is you've downloaded from the internet. Then right click on it and click on run as administrator. Sir, please I didn't get that sir, part, sir. Okay, you have downloaded, you have been able to download the server. Yes, I mean I've downloaded the this. document the software from, from Google. You have downloaded it. Yes. Now sir. this is what you downloaded. This yes, is sir. the document you downloaded. Right click on it. Yeah. Run it as administrator. Yeah. I've installed it already, sir. Oh, you've installed it already. Great. So because you've installed it already, then we don't need to run it. Uh we don't need to run it twice so that you don't affect what you have already run. So the moment you install it. You click, you, you you do that uh, right click, run as administrator. You have something that looks like this. So the only thing you want to do here, so every see this is the same for everyone. This thing you are looking at is the same for everyone. Mine cannot be different from yours. Are you getting it now? Yes, sir. So this is your some uh, control panel. That is, this is where you control. This is a panel where you control everything that happens on your website, that happens at the, on the dashboard of your website. So the only thing you want to do from here is to click on, uh, okay, let me stop. I already started this. Is to click on Start Apache. We have different modules here. We have one, two, three, four, five modules. Forget about the last three. The only thing you are dealing with is Apache one and MySQL. So the first one is click on the first one, Apache, start it. Can you see it's already running? Now it is in it is in green color. The second one is MySQL, then also click on start. You can see now that the software is, is already running. Status change detected. Can you see running? So which means your server is now working, which now means your laptop now has turned to what to a server. 
So you have that uh, ready. That is the first thing. Now go back to WordPress and then uh, we're starting from here now. Go back to your uh, your your browser. Go to w Sir. dot yeah. Sir, please can you come again? Okay, what what part? What part should I? The installation part. Okay. The installation part. Go to Google, type SAM server. That is, if you if you don't want to download it from the document, I already downloaded it for you and uploaded it on Google Drive. If you don't want to download that one, you want to download yours. Go to Google, type SAM server. When you click on when you when you uh, visit uh, Google, you will see all kinds of download files, uh, download download links. Find the ones that gives you access to free download. When you download the document, it's going to be like this. It is already downloaded now. This is what you downloaded. Right click on the document you downloaded and run as administrator. It will bring out bring out a pop up that says yes or no. Click on yes. Immediately, what you have is this. Can you see it now? Can you see my screen? After that, what you will have is this. If you are in the group, I'm going to copy. I'm going to type what I just said. Okay, okay. I think I should open. I should open a document for us. So that uh, let me just help you out with these steps. I'm I'm opening a, a Microsoft Word document. Okay, so I want to type out the steps for us. So the first thing is download exam. Sorry, I'm not used to the keyboard of this. Okay. Download Sam. So you have you have downloaded Sam. The next thing to do is install the Sam uh, that you downloaded. The next thing you want to do is start it. You know, I told you that you have to come here and start the Apache. Start Apache and start my SQL. So start. Start Apache and also start my SQL. Don't see, don't don't worry about all of this. Uh, don't feel like am I going to be doing all of these things each time I want to be the weather? No, you're only doing this this once. After this uh, setup period, you're not doing it again. In fact, by the time you start getting clients, you're not doing all of these things. The control panel that that person is going to purchase gives you access to all of these things. So I'm still going to walk you through what the live control panel looks like. So you are only doing this once. Once you do it, you cannot start doing 100, 1,000 websites on the same server that you are setting up. The only thing you'll be doing is each time you open your laptop, just come to start. Start Apache, start. Just as if you are starting an engine. You want to you know, start your benefit. You are going out in the morning. You start it. You come back in the evening, you turn it off, you enter into your house. So if you shut down your laptop, it will, it will have, uh, you know, stop automatically. Once you open your laptop the next time you want to work, you simply do what? You simply start starting. So you are only doing all of this setup once. So this is stage one. Let me just call this stage one for you. This is stage one. Now, stage two. Don't forget... We are dealing with WordPress. Now, this setup that you just, uh, you know, this server that you just downloaded and set up is what will now control the WordPress that you want to, with the WordPress dashboard where you want to start building your website. This is where, this is what will connect that dashboard to the live uh, website that is the front end that you want to display. So let's go to stage two. Stage two is the WordPress itself. Don't forget you are you are dealing with WordPress dashboard. That is where you want to build your website. So we are going to stage two now. Stage two is go back to your browser and 
search for and go go to www.wordpress.org Are you see now wordpress this is wordpress website official website get simply click on get wordpress and you see so you can now download your wordpress so we are going to do that now done i'm already downloading it's not that heavy it's just 23 megabytes so the same wordpress i asked you to download is the same thing i'm downloading now same thing download wordpress See, it's already downloading. It's very fast because it's not that heavy. So for each of the websites you want to do, you must download a separate WordPress application. You must come to this WordPress.org and download an application card. It is already downloaded. So each time you want to build a website, you must come to that website and download a different software for it. If you are building www. Uh, uh, um, Fashion, fashionhub.com, you, you come here and download WordPress, which means you are using it for fashionhub.com. If you are building your personal portfolio, www.tobimanuel.com, you must also come here and download the WordPress uh, uh, setup. So we already have that downloaded already. The next thing to do, please, I hope you are still following me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so now, in our step two, download WordPress, right? Download WordPress. Or well, let's say WordPress setup. Yeah. That is the stick two. Now the stick three, uh, and still on the stick two. And last you want to do, you've already downloaded the uh, file. Now you want to unzip it. Don't forget this is in a zip file. It's not in a file like all of this file. It is in a compressed file. So if you don't have unzip on your laptop, try to download um, unzip or WinRAR or stuff. Just download WinRAR zip, and that will help you to be able to unzip. But you should be able to have um, unzip on your laptop anyway. So the only thing you want to do is just come here and then um, uh, extract files. Can you see? Extract files. Click on OK. Your files is extracted. Hello? Can you come again, sir? Okay, what you are doing at that stage is just right click on that file you downloaded and click on extract file. So we are waiting for it to extract. That is that file, they they com they compress all of it, all of them together for you in a single document so that it will not be heavy for you to download. But you can easily download them so it is when you don't download them you will not be able to see everything that you downloaded so let, this is what we just unzipped so this is the file now that is the stage that we are on zip file on zip file on zip wordpress file the next thing we want to do don't, don't worry, this, like I told you, these steps are just like you are navigating through your Facebook. You know where you can see pages, you know where you can see pictures. If you want to view people's um, uh, uh, about them, you can you know where to read it. You want to see their profile, all of, it's as simple as that. So by the time you, you know, understand all of these procedures, it'll be easy for you to do. And don't worry, I'm going to copy all of these things, all of these steps and paste for us on the group so that if you can't get it and you also have the video to repair the video to also watch so it's a very simple thing to do don't see that uh, it's a very big task so now uh since we now have the file already downloaded we now want to go back to we want to go back we want to connect this file that we downloaded to this uh zamp server which is our server that is we want to connect the file to this server so what you are going to do at this stage uh, is to move the WordPress file that you downloaded, move it to a folder. Open your, open your, I'm opening, I'm opening my, my folder, my file manager rather, and I'm going to local disk C, 
Can you see? We are, you are open local disk of your laptop, the local disk. Then you move to exam. That is that exam, the file of exam you downloaded. Inside exam, you move to HT Docs. Can you see docs now? So what you want to do inside this HD docs, that is when you are now connecting, that is when you are connecting the two together. That is, you have moved the WordPress inside the exam uh, folder. So in order to do that, uh, let's find let's find the other where we have that file inside our downloaded uh, folder. So it's very simple. Just drag. You can just drag or copy or paste that folder you just unzip inside the htdoc folder. Can you see? It is already there. See, it is already there. Now, the next thing you want to do, okay, I think I should write that for you. I think I should write that. So move the WordPress folder to htdocs located inside inter exam uh, folder on the C C drive. Yeah. So that you can easily understand the pathway. So the next thing you want to do now is in fact you are you are at the last stage now of this uh, setting up your uh, server. Is go back to that same folder. We are going back to that same folder. This is the docs. Now you already move your WordPress inside. That you download. You already move it inside. You now want to rename this WordPress to what is the name of your of your business, or what is the name of the company of the business you are developing. That is www so so dot com let's say for the purpose of this class let's say training session let's say we want to we want to be the there for www training training session dot com or let's say no code training now i want you to remember something and I don't want you to forget this. At this stage, don't think of using capital letter. Maybe you want to put N, capital letter, uh, the C, capital letter, or you want to, and don't forget this, don't forget this thing that you just, uh, you know, wrote inside this place. Make sure, in fact, try to copy it. Because the name of what you are using inside this place, you are still going to be needing it, you know, while setting up your, my PHP admin, that is, be connecting your setting up your dashboard. So you are already developing, you're you are already connecting, you are already developing your dashboard now. Just enter. I just so I've already renamed the website to from WordPress to no code trade because that is the name of what I want to use. And if you feel what you want to use is maybe your name, maybe you are building your personal portfolio, to be Emmanuel. It's as simple as that. But for the purpose of this uh, training session, let's say no code training. No code training. Now, go back. You have named that. Make sure your this thing is already is running. You can see it is already it is still running. Now go back to go back to your browser. Where is the browser we are using? Okay, this is the browser we are using. The next thing you want to do is you, now you have you want to start setting up your website. Don't forget the first thing you are setting up is the dashboard. After the dashboard, then you start setting up uh what you are now doing on the dashboard is what will be displayed on the front end for the public to see for everyone to see. So at this stage, what you want to do is you want to enter. You want to enter local host. Just type local host. Local host. 
forward slash php my admin i'm going to write that inside the listing for you can you see just click on enter so you are now inside the control panel of your server can you see here from here server server 127.00.00 0, 0.0.1. 0, 0. So this is your server. So your laptop has successfully turned to a server. You can see your database. This is the database of your server, your web server, your PHP. Don't forget it. Don't, don't bother yourself about all of this jargons. Don't forget you want to become a no-code developer. So uh even the more you do it, the more you start building yourself a client, the more you begin to understand what all of these things mean. So, but for now, just focus on uh what we are doing now. You have been able to rename your web your that WordPress to whatever domain name you want to use. You now want to add that website to this server. So all you need to do is click on new. Can you see? I believe you can see my cursor. Just click on new. At least you are clicking, uh, creating a new website. So what you are doing is just paste that name so that you don't you don't miss it. No code training that will be used and click on create. You can see create here database you know successfully created so you successfully created your uh connected your website to your server so that we don't miss that step let's write it down for so, um, state theory state theory open your phone Then enter uh, localhost. Yeah. Slash PHP my admin. Right. Then the next thing you want to do is create new. Click on Click on new. Remember, and then enter the name of your domain. Don't forget, similar to what the same thing that you use in the name that folder. So, enter the name of your domain name. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can even say of your so that you can remember websites. Domain name. So that is the three for us. Now you have successfully connected your website to the server side. Page four, which is now we want to enter our, we want to open our dashboard. So go back to your Chrome and open a new tab. Now we want to go to our dashboard, set up our dashboard. Now enter uh, localhost. Small letter preferably. Localhost forward slash. Now, what is the name of that website? I want. What is the name of the website we are working with? I I, I just want you. I want to be sure you are all following me. What is the name, please? No code like, training. No code training. Can you see now? So we are entering our website now. So you see, I have this here. Sure. Yeah. Please, uh, something is wrong. Okay, the no portraying didn't create uh, perfectly. 
So let's check if our server is running. Let's check. Okay, so um, we need to go back to that folder. No code. Go back. Oh, brother. So now this is what happened. The WordPress, this thing that we opened. In fact, I'm very happy this just happened so that we would uh, be more careful with this stage. Now, I'm going back to our htdoc folder. Remember when we renamed, if you go back to our, if you go back to the file that we actually downloaded after we uh, unzipped it. So you remember we, we just moved it inside this place and we renamed. Inside that folder is another folder that is still called WordPress. So what we are just going to do is to move that one out. So that is the one we should actually, uh, very good. So I'm just going to delete this, but we are still using the same name. Let me just copy the name. How many of you have heard about debugging before? So we are renaming it. Hi, sir. It's, yeah, what do you understand by debugging? Um, checking out the errors, possible errors in your in the codes of now, the Yes, nice one. It can happen on any progress you are working on and it just got stopped and you'll be like what happened what went wrong now we just entered our website and we realized that we couldn't access our website and we were like what happened so we were like index of no code training which means the file is actually there but inside that file we still have something as wordpress can you see this is the wordpress so we have to say okay let's trace back the first thing i did was to check my server is my server running I saw that yes, my server was running. Then I said, okay, if my server is running, let me go back to my folder. What could be wrong from here? Is it in correct order? Then I realized that no, there was a folder still named WordPress. I had to move that one out. So it means when you are importing, after you extract your folder, open it and make sure you are you are dragging the last WordPress folder inside the HD docs. It is that one that you rename as the name of your website. So now let us go back to inputs. We can open a new tab. Input our local host. Local host slash no code training. No code training. Yes. Now we can see once you see this logo of WordPress and you see. It is asking you to select language. What does that mean? They are ready to sign you in. You are welcome to WordPress. So welcome to your dashboard. Just like you just uh, you downloaded an application and you are about you don't want to sign in. The first thing is they want to set up your name, your this, your blah blah blah. This is the same thing we are doing now. So we want to configure our WordPress. I know you don't want to use Chinese. You don't want to use uh, Bala Blue. So I'm not using Bala Blue. I'm using English language. Continue. Now, welcome to WordPress. Before getting started, you need to know the following items. Please, guys, this is where you need to you know, be very, very careful. All of these informations are Sorry, very, sir. very important. Yeah. But can, um, does it require us to own our, probably our network? At this stage, you don't need data. Okay, okay, yeah. In fact, in fact, right from 
after you see after downloading your zam and downloading your uh your wordpress you don't need data again yeah okay so it means there's nothing like uh, it is because i don't have data that is why i could not develop my website you can develop your website develop all kinds of websites and you know even later at the stage of now moving for that client live then you can turn on your data and move it live for the person if you need some special plugins that is when you also need data to be able to download it from the internet and the moment you download it switch up your data and continue with your project so don't forget all of these things they are very important so i'm going to copy them for you let's copy them and put them in our folder sorry are we still keeping track of these uh stages So I think, uh, let me just help you to upload these stages. The next thing up at this stage four, what we did was to open a new tab, open uh, another tab. Open another tab you know, on your browser. And uh, what we did was to type Type post or slash the name of the domain. I hope you understand what that means. EG. Okay. EG. Local post slash no code training. Yeah. So that is for, for you to be able to keep track of the steps. Now let's just keep this. So you know the only thing you want to do is let's go. You are ready to begin. So at this stage, you want to start setting up. What is the name of your the, at this database name? You are using the name of your website. That is that same name. No. That same name, the name of your you can just come here and copy it. This no code training that is the name of your domain, that is the same name we are using here. So, database name is no database name, put it in front, no code training. As a developer, please, one thing you all, all, always have to have at the back of your mind is always keep your passwords your configuration details in general password design once you forget it you can spend a whole year trying to you know get it back get your account back you can debug and debug and debug and debug and not find your way through so always have uh, a document if i advise you to use google keep have a form of google keep where you keep all your files most importantly your, your um, database information for each of your clients if you have 100 clients have each document for them all where you keep all their database. So the username is going to be at this stage, the conversion stage, the username is root. Please don't forget. And the password, leave it empty. So all of these things, leave it just the way it is. The table prefix is WP underscore. Leave it that way. The local host name is local, just leave it that way. The only thing you are doing is adding your domain name here and just your username typing root, leave the password empty and do what submit now all right sparky you've made it through the part of the installation so wordpress cannot communicate with your database if you are ready time to you know now run the installation so we are running the installation now just click on that you are now ready to go so all of these details now is yours you have control by it. this is the details you you know input here are what you will be using to log in and log out of your dashboard account. Take for example, I showed you the dashboard of uh, my website. Let's say test with that. This is testdigitals.com. I showed you the dashboard at that time. Now, if you want to add this thing, uh, if you want to enter your dashboard, WP, that's because it's already live. It's also the same thing for 
we are also going to be using WP admin by the time we get there. Now you can see. So the details that we have here, my username and password, are the ones I already created here at this stage. So once you forget what you are creating at this stage, then you can have access to your website. So now I also have access to the back end of my website. I just log in. Can you see? So this is the dashboard I explained to you at the start of this meeting. So this is where you have access to start building, team, plugin, pages, posts that makes up your front end, the front end of your website. So what gives you access to this? is what you do here so what is the site name let's just say the name of our site is no code no code training class or should we build a real website um okay let's say let's build let's build okay no code training site here yeah. let's just build a website for no code another website for no code then the username you want to use, you can decide to use any username, just the way you use username. So just say, uh, I'm going to use no code, slash dash admin. Because if you use ordinary admin, all these actors realize that many people just use admin. So you leave your uh, website to be vulnerable to, to actors. They can easily ask your website. And if it is a kind of website where you have a uh, pay start, or maybe when you sell products and you've already integrated your payment details, you also have the best actual websites and uh, the money for your products just goes to your account. And so, what's learning now? No code admin. So, now your password, you can create your own password and you can use this Google generated password. But I'm going to use this Google generated password. Let's just copy it. Let's just copy it inside our notes tab. Password. Let's copy it there. Username. Username. Use a uh, no code dash admin. Don't forget that. Okay. The password, the username we used here was root. All of these things leave empty the way it is. So, so we're having different generated password. Should we use the one you copy, sir? The one I copied. Yes, we have in different generated password here. Yeah. Where? Like I have my password, the one that is generated here is different. Yes, yes, because we are on the same. You have okay, you are doing it alongside with me, right? Yes, sir. Then your password should be different from mine. If it is not different, then I will have access to your own website. Yeah, yeah. You understand now? Yes, yes. My, my all of us, our password, the passwords are unique. They are unique access, you know, unique access codes to enter your account. So if mine is not different from yours, then what is the dashboard I'm having? It means anybody can access it. So here you can decide to input your email. If you input your email and you forgot your password, you can easily use the email to recover. Are you getting it now? So it's advantageous to use your email your active email and if there are informations about hackers attacking your website or whatever is wrong on your website wordpress can easily uh mail you to notify you that hey guy something is going on your website would you like to check it out so now we already have our details so what we do is install wordpress so i'm okay if i understand i'm going to provide email sorry so let's just use a demo email let's say Okay, I have one email. Sign O at gmail.com. So, sign O at gmail.com. Yeah. So now we install WordPress. Just hold, in, hold on for it. So, it has been now login. WordPress has been installed. So the same login details that we use, let's now copy it. What we, the username is no code admin, right? Copy your password. Then I want you to remember 
so that I can always have access then login. Yes, welcome to our no code training dashboard. So welcome to your new website. So if the name of the website you use was uh let's say the name of the website you use was uh teamlaw.com that person is also on this page she sells products she sells bags and uh, this watch and whatever or the name of that person is a uh, um Amtos fashion or or the name of that person is a uh, pastor portfolio toby manuel uh dot com that is just the way to have your dashboard so from here you can now start building and now we can even see a demo website. That is what this page that we have, what it looks like. So let's go and see. If you over on this, you can right click and say open link in the new tab. We are missing. So this is our first, this is the first page of our website, local training site. So, so guys, I've been able to walk you through the installation of the server and connecting it to your dashboard. So now you can, I believe from these stages now you can easily set up, you can easily set up your server and then have access to your, so it's just one page set up, can you see it's just one page, very easy. And I'm very happy that uh, we have people following us live, the way we are doing it, they are also, and that's what I expected everybody to do. That was why I had to send us a document to the, the setup for people to download. So if you, for the person following us, please, I, have you been able to access your WordPress dashboard too? Yes, yes. I'm currently. Okay. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Even more than one person. Okay, okay. Good, good. 